rightly dividing the word. And it's going to come from 2 Timothy 2, 14. And I don't have the book up here, but I got the scripture. So I don't remember what lesson this is. Is it the second one or the third one? Second lesson, lesson two in your book. Uh, we're surely looking forward to hearing from Brother Gill today. One of our best friends in the ministry. Uh, neighbor and pastor. For years. How many years did you tell me you passed around Mumford? Fourteen. Uh, and him being a pastor there and me being the pastor here, we didn't get a lot of fellowship. Maybe just once in a while. We have full fellowship now than we did when we lived here. And, but that's good because I appreciate the good fellowship from the Gill family. And, uh, of course, Sister Gill being Dwayne's sister. But don't hold that against her. But she's not like Dwayne. So that's all I'm going to say about that. God's so good. 2 Timothy 2, verse 14. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the surfeiting, subterfuge, Okay, that's good enough. Y'all heard her, I hope. Of the hearers. And then it said, uh, study to show thyself approved unto God. God, if I can get God's approval, then I'm in high cotton. Uh, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman, now this is not just to the ministry, however, it based and pushes for the lesson seemingly more toward the ministry. But it's not just for the ministry, it's for all saints of God. Show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word here, but shod profane and vain babbling. You know what that means? That means uh, shod a bunch of junk. That's what. It, that's really what it said. A bunch of just nothing but, you know, babbling. Paul even one place in his verse of uh, writing said said that some are just constantly looking for a new thing. In the book said there's nothing new under the sun. Everything. There's not a new sermon. It's been preached. It may not have been used word for word like maybe that I would use it or maybe Brother Gill or Brother Mark or somebody, but it's been preached. Right. If it has never been preached, I don't even want to hear it because it's probably a bunch of junk. And so, so to avoid profane and vain babbling, for they will, what will? Vain babbling, profane, vain babbling will increase into more ungodliness. Got to watch what your ears hear. Right. The children so used to sing a little song, be careful little ears what you hear. Right. Be careful little eyes what you see. Right. And so that's what, this kind of stuff, that profane babbling running their mouth when they don't have a clue what they're talking about. Right. Uh, I, I, man, I, I, I've experienced that this week. <laughs> you know what I've done? I said, in my heart, I said, hmm. No, no, in my mind, I said, whoa, that's back. And in my heart, I said, eh. Yeah. Because I knew it was just a bunch of babbling. And so, and he said, and their words will eat as doeth a canker, a dump a canker, of whom is, and I'm, I'm totally lost on those two words, who concerning the truth have erred, and they're not even in the truth, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. This is to, to overthrow people. You know, there are people that are, are set out to destroy God's people. And I think sometimes the devil just puts them right in the midst to do that very thing with their, with their tongue and their babbling and their talking. And their words eat as doth a canker of whom... Uh, Verse 18, I'm sorry, I, I, I jumped back too far up. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some, nevertheless, he said, considering all what I just said, the apostle said, but nevertheless, you know, that's a song, 
I mean, a, a word we like. Nevertheless. Disciples said, ain't caught a thing, ain't had a nipple all night. Nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to put my net on the right side. Are you following me? Nevertheless. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. It doesn't matter what the babblers say. It doesn't matter what those that, that don't believe that meets greasy says. It, it doesn't matter. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. You are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. It doesn't matter what everybody else says. It doesn't matter what other doctrines say. You don't even need to fool with other doctrines. Buy the truth, sell it not. Get a hold. Don't let those babblers get a hold of you. And if you don't know, if you haven't studied the Word of God, you may not even know about these people. You know, they can, they, man, they can be dressed in a in a in a uh, 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 angel outfit and be inside, be full of nothing but the devil. My mother used to say, "The old booger man could get along with them." You see what I'm saying? Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands assured, having this seal. It, the foundation is sealed. You don't want it sealed by the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That is the foundation that stands sure. A lot of things I may not know, but I know the foundation. I know where the church is built at. I know where it came from. I know the first day of the church of that little uh, little band of apostles when they gathered in that upper room and they began to pray and seek the Lord. And, and I don't think they were ordered to carry out. I think they were seeking the Lord and worshiping God. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, when that, when that day of, of celebration was, was, was right in the as they used to say, slap T. Courtney in the middle of there came a sound from heaven. Like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. I'm still on that foundation. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. That's the foundation, ladies and gentlemen, that stands sure. We're in a time today that we're living in a time of do it yourself. Do it yourself. You know, in, ev in everything, and it's sad that many people try it religiously also. Uh, a time of a kind of do it yourself project. I, I know you in the natural, you, you, uh, it, it's very popular today uh, in, in, in our world. And, uh, it, it's called do it yourself. If anyone wants to, Try to do it yourself. You got a project at home. You got some repair work or some painting or or you want to work on the car or you want to you know work on the lawnmower or the wife wants you to work on the lawnmower or you want to work on your trolling motor. Now, are you clamping or oh, I thought you were uh, <laughs> You don't have to know how to do a lot of things. Right. Not if you've got a computer. You can go on that computer on YouTube or Google or something of that sort. And, and if you know how, you can pull up a video on whatever it is that you want to do. Right. You know, Joe does it all the time. Joe, yeah. he, he does it all the time. He Googles everything. I, he may Google supper. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but he does. It, and you know what? It works for him. Because it tells it walks him through situations. You know, my wife, uh, got, she was wanting to cook a filet mignon in a iron, cast iron skillet. And because uh, I gave my grill away. And so she takes it, goes on YouTube or Google or whatever it was. And he told her how to cook that steak. In a cast iron skillet. Right. She tried it. Great, right. works great. Tastes better, than, in my opinion, better than a grill steak. Right. That's just my opinion. And all because she wanted to do it herself. Right. Not to mention the $40 cheaper. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So to do it yourself, you just go on your computer and, and some things you might have problem in repairing, but you can find it on the internet. 
That internet guy, whoever had been dead, ought to be rich. I, well, I'm sure he is. But in spite of all of what we learn and in spite of all what we see, the old saying is still true. You don't, uh, tools do not make a mechanic. Okay? Uh, having a cookbook does not make you a good cook. There's certain things you have to have for yourself. It's not you can't Google how to be a mechanic, or that is having good tools. I go to the bus shop and man, they got two boxes as big, almost big as that piano, and they got drawer and tools everywhere, and probably to get the job done with enough to put you back pocket. But they got all kinds of tools, but that does not mean that person is a mechanic. What means he's a mechanic or, or her is when they can pull the hood on something and tell you what's wrong with that vehicle by listening to it. Or at least able to go to the area where the problem is. That makes a mechanic. And so ministry is the same way. Ministry is the same way. Paul gives a having a and, and and let me say this having a Bible, just having a Bible, don't make you a preacher. That that it takes and I'm gonna tell you another one and this is gonna go over like a lead balloon. Having a degree don't make you a preacher. Being college graduate does not make you a preacher. There's nothing wrong with these things now. I'm not implying that. I wish I had more education. And I wish I had a degree. But you know my old saying? You freeze by degrees. And so that does not make you a preacher. Just having a nice Bible don't make you a preacher. And let me tell you something else. Now listen carefully to me. Don't judge me yet until I get through. Just because you read your Bible don't make you a scholar. Just because you read the Bible every day does not make you a a a student of the Bible. What makes you a student of the Bible, in my opinion, is when you study the Bible. Yeah, I can read a book, and I can read that whole book, and I, when I get on the second page, I don't forgot what the first page said. Come on, some of you know what I'm talking about. You've got to study that. You, you have to dig into it. And, and uh, number one, it's got to catch my attention. Because the time I get to the second or third page, if it ain't got my attention, it goes on the shelf. I don't read it. And so just doing preacher things, dressing like a preacher, does not make you a preacher. It's the study. And I went on and I made emphasis on the scripture that where Paul said that you study to show yourself approved unto God, not unto man. Or not unto the church board or the or the organizational board. You study the show. You, I'm not looking. I'm, I want you. I want your approval. And, and Lord help you all if y'all don't have if I don't have y'all's approval because y'all put up me forty years. And if I hadn't done something now, I might as well take something and go sleep. But my desire is not to please our church board that we don't have. We do have a trustee board. Now I tell them to keep them happy because they, they help control the money. But my approval is to God. And you know what makes a healthy church? A healthy church has a leader that's got God's approval. That's what makes a healthy. A healthy church don't mean you got a that don't mean you drive. I, I talked to a, a man here a few weeks. Well, I, no, I guess it was longer than a few weeks ago. I guess it was before the pandemic thing set in. And he told me their church has to, now test it, you, you know, watch yourself. I hope you're not chewing gum because you get strangled. Um, has to take in $35,000 a week just to pay the overhead. And that's not putting any money back. That don't make a happy church because they can take in 
$35,000 a week. I don't have that problem. Yeah. That ain't what makes a healthy church. And it, it don't make a strong church. Attendance does not make a strong church. You can have 100, 200, 500, 50, 25, whatever you've got. That don't, a strong church is a church that goes into the Word of God and studies the Word of God and got a leader that studies the Word of God and that is trying his or her best to get the approval of God. Even if it hurts. Somebody said, you give until it hurts. I said, no, I think you got it backwards. I think you give until it feels good. That's how, long, that's how much you give until you feel good about it. And so we're talking about, when he talks about dividing the word, that, that means studying the word. You study, you divide. Brother Mark makes it very plain, I think on Wednesday nights, I think very plain, uh, that you can't take one scripture and say this is how it is because you may be totally in left field. You study that. That's why he goes from the New Testament in Revelation back to the Old Testament, picks up a verse in the Old Testament that corresponds with the verse in the Revelation, and then he'll drop back to the Pauline epistles and he'll pick up one of Paul's verses and he all hooked together. That's called studying the Word of God. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can't just... That's, and that makes for a healthy church. In spite of all this, you, that, this other stuff doesn't work. Now, there's some things you can do. There's some things you, you can accomplish. Sometimes you, you have to have somebody that's an expert to, to in the natural or in the spiritual. Right. Having Paul given a guideline. He, he gives us a guideline. He calls Timothy his, his son in the Lord. Right. I think what that means, and I guess most people agree with me, uh, I think that means that Timothy was converted under Paul. And so Paul spiritually was his, his father or dad in the Lord. Maybe Paul baptized him. Or at least maybe one of Paul's followers baptized him or something. Paul, I believe in one place, said, I, I baptized none of you save the house of Cephas, I believe. But uh, he called him his son in the Lord, and he exhorted Timothy. He tells Timothy, his own son, he said, you study the word of God. Dig it out. Look at it. He recognized that to be an effective minister, and this is going to fit every person in this building, to be effective in your walk with God, if you're going to have an effective uh, testimony, you're going to have to know the word of God. And to know the Word of God, you've got to study the Word of God. It's more than just, and, and I, I read the Bible every day, just like most of you do, and I listen to CDs going down the road in my truck. I, I got it playing all the time, and, and that's good, and it, and it puts it in my memory. It puts it in my, in my, in my kidneys up here, but, but it don't make a preacher. I've got to study that Word of God. When... Brother Mark quotes a scripture up here. I got to know, is he telling me right? Yes, sir. Amen. Is that, is, does the Bible really say that? Right. I quoted a scripture one day, Brother Gill, down at work, when, before I quit chewing sheet metal, I quoted and, and this guy, he was a uh, Jehovah's Witness, or he thought, and uh, I quoted in scripture where Jesus said, I'm the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega, da 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 you know. He said, the Bible don't say that. I said, oh, yes, it does. I said, your book may not say it, but mine does. Right. So I just goes over to my tackle, my toolbox, and I can tell I got them on my mind, my tackle box. I, I, I got my Bible that flipped over to Revelation. I, I found it. I had hard to be right where it was. Turned around. I said, there it is. You've got to know the Word of God. Only way I can know the Word of God, i got to read it more than one time. We have a bread program, so it's crazy for promotes every year and I thank God for that but you got to read that more than one time a year you got to read it and read it and study it and read it and study it and read it and study it until it becomes second nature you got to know 
Am I? You don't have to ask me. Should I do that? Should I live? Do, should, is this wrong? You already know it's wrong. Stop doing it. Even if it ain't wrong, if you got to doubt it, it don't do it. I, got, I, I shouldn't have to tell you how to dress. You ought to know. Man, don't walk around here in a penny skirt. <laughs> High heel shoes. Oh, Lord, what would you think if I walked up here? I know what you think. You think, my God, he's gone out of his mind. Pastor doesn't have to tell me to do nothing. I didn't do that, man. I was a redneck. You didn't do that. Uh -uh. I heard a story back when I was, when I was a young man, uh, two or three years ago. They was having a school play, and this one guy was playing a woman. I said, well, you take a big man and make me play a woman. Thank you. He said, oh, ain't nothing wrong. Well, you go out there and tell them funny boys that. Yeah. That's right. That wasn't nothing wrong with that. Right. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be so truthful. Well, true. But I'm telling the truth. Telling I'm telling you, all you got to look, all you got to do is study the book. So Paul tells Timothy to show yourself approved unto God, Timothy. Right. Make sure God's approved. Study, verse 15, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. You know, I'm not ashamed of what I believe. Amen. I'm not ashamed of what I preach. Amen. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to walk down the street with my beautiful wife in, in her modest clothing. I'm not ashamed of that. Amen. I'd be ashamed the other way. Amen. Oh, I'm just being honest. I'm sorry. In other words, it be it's to study you would get God's approval. And if I get God's approval, I'm gonna have a happy, healthy church. Because I've got God's approval. And I, a big church is not necessarily a happy church. Brother Mark McLean told me, and I'm sure maybe it's even spoken to some of you, that some of the worst problems he sees in church, this was before he came here, was churches that was run by a board. Right. Right. Yes, sir. Did I tell it right, Brother Mark? Yes, said it had all time confusion and all time backbiting, right. and nobody could approve to agree to anything, and, and nobody wanted this, and, and you know, man, we got to have a board meeting. We got to have some light bulbs. Yeah. Right. But we gotta have some toilet tissue. For Pete's sake, have a bull meat. There's no toilet tissue. Get a five gallon bucket of car. I mean I'm I'm being comfortable, but I'm telling the truth, ladies and gentlemen. A happy church is not a church necessarily that's run by a bull. It can be. It can be. There's nothing wrong with having a church board. There's nothing wrong with that. I've been meeting them if you get a deacon, I'm quitting church. They already have quit in their mind. I told you, if I want this congregation happy, I gotta, if I've got God's approval and you see God on me, or you see God through me. Now, I'm not the sharpest knife in the kitchen. I quit school because I had recess. I'm not educated. I'm not educated, man. You don't have an educated preacher. But I got all this gray hair. I've been educated. I know what it takes to have a happy church. You want to have a happy church, you come talk to me. I can tell you about having a happy church. I tell you what it takes to have a church that loves one another. I can tell you that because I've got 41 years. I've been almost 40 here in a year and a half, almost a year and a half in another church. i got experience at that. No brag, just facts. Right. Right. Count the hairs, what's left of them. All right. Are you understanding? Yes. And so, if I want a happy church, i got to get God's approval, Timothy. If you want a happy ministry, a strong ministry, Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God. In other words, when I open this book, and when you open your Bible, and you start to study that Bible, you're literally trodden where God's Word is. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him that was made, and without Him there was nothing made that was made. And then the Word became flesh. When you get in the Word of God, you're getting right down where God lives. Amen. 
When you walk in that word, you're walking directly with God himself, not some man-made uh, creed or organization or religion or, or something of that sort. You're walking with God. The word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and joints and mire, and is a discerner of the thought. You get in that word of God, he doesn't discern your thoughts. It'll let you know you're thinking things that you shouldn't be thinking. You feel a check mark or a check. I told you about the time I was walking over to some of my friends in a sheet metal shop having a cup of coffee in his break time. I was walking over and something checked me and said, you don't need to be in that conversation. Oh, hard-headed me. I just kept walking. When I got over there, I knew right away I didn't need to be in that conversation. That's what you call being in the Word of God. The Word checks you. Hope I'm making sense. Doing my best. Sister Creasy or Brother Mark could have done a whole lot better. If the preacher don't grow, if he's not happy, then the church ain't happy. I mean, I'm in the hot seat. If I'm not growing, you're not growing. Okay, I'll let you eat. If I'm not growing spiritually, you're not growing. I can't develop a spiritual church. Let me say it this way. God pricked me, touched my heart the other day. He said, you cannot do spiritual things in the flesh. Because the flesh is the enemy to God. You can't build nothing spiritual in the flesh. You can't have a spiritual family and you, you're about as dead as 2 o'clock in the morning. You can't have a spiritual husband or a spiritual wife walking in the flesh. You can't build a church, Brother Creasy, having a spiritual... Oh, you may build a game. You may have a mob. But you ain't got a church if you're working in the flesh. Am I right? Because the flesh is the enemy to God. And God don't work that way. That's not the way God works. We get, I get this idea sometimes because church ain't growing. Uh, with number, I mean, our Sunday school is not growing, and it's not. Our church is not. Our Wednesday night services, sometimes we'll have 60, 65, sometimes we'll have 30. People don't get sick. People don't get sick. If, you, if you're sick, sure enough, sick, don't come. I don't want to be sick. If you've got a stomach virus, please don't breathe on me. I don't like that. Are you understanding? Just, make it, just, just try to make some points. So, and it would be, this is a continued study. It's like an everyday uh, this study would get God's approval. I don't read good. I'm not making excuses. Hey, what you see is what you got. If you can't hack it, I don't. I, I can't. I'm not a good reader, brother Gil. I can't. Per, just like those two words over there. Man, I can't pronounce them. Right. I ain't got a clue who they are. But listen to me. I can play a tape. And I'll find that place where I'm having trouble with these words and I'll listen to it over and over. Now I'll tape or CD and I'll back it up, listen to it, back it up, listen to it, back it up. Half a dozen does kind of, and I get up here, I can't read the word what I said. <laughs> hey, this ain't got to do with age, man. This has been going on for 40 years. <laughs> but the approval, is this is a continuing study. I can't just read. I make my notes. These notes right here I got. I've read over them and studied them at least a half a dozen or more, or more. It's a continuing study that would produce or maintain an effective ministry. Church ministry. Evangelistic ministry. Just because you're an evangelist and you don't have to, you're not necessarily filling a pulpit every week does not disqualify you from having to study. One of my daughters just made a statement, and, and I understood. I understood. She wants to come down and have breakfast with her down in Savannah. And, and, uh, and my wife said, well, you know, your dad said he takes third Saturdays and everything to make sure everything's. He, she said, my dad could preach. He's preached so much. He could preach one. And, but it don't work that way. 
I could pull one out of the hat. I could pull one off my off my notes on my computer. I got a whole big list of them. I could pull one up. But am I getting God's approval? Right. Have I studied enough that I got God's approval? That, that makes a healthy church. Come on. Am I making sense to you? That makes a healthy church. Amen. I watch it, bro. And I don't watch it. So what I'll do is I'll see him come in out of my hush. And it's true. This is all true today when Paul instructed Timothy that continued study that would produce and maintain an effective ministry, and that's exactly how it is today. It's, a, it's, it's a continually. It's the preacher. Y'all, I've said, be, I said before, I'm 74 years old. I had been pastoring here, will be 40 years, if God lets me live, to the first Sunday in November. So, I mean, I've, I've got a lot of stuff, I, but i got to continue to grow. I can't just say, I've got it all. I've learned it all. The more I think I've learned, the more I realize I had not learned. Are you understanding? So it's a continued growth, and if I, if I continue to grow, then you grow. Not more people. Oh, I wish we had... Whatever the max is, about 250 is supposed to be back the balcony and all. I wish we had every one of them. I wish some of y'all had to stand around the wall. But that don't mean it's the healthy church. That just means a lot of people have gotten mixed up and thought it was Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> so you understand me? And it will cause the church to grow spiritually. Getting God's approval. An effective ministry will... And, and saints is acknowledgeable in the word of God. Having, I pronounced that word wrong, it's having knowledge in the word of God. You ought to know, every time I open my mouth, you ought to know if I'm quoting the scriptures right or not. This ought to be something in here. We as Christians and ministers always, must always seek approval and acceptance from God. What would God think about that sermon? I, I read, I, no, 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 I didn't read the story. I heard, brother, uh, one of our evangelists, big guy, went to preach for his uncle. And uh, he was telling the story. And he preached a big ordeal, big church. He preached it. Brother Billy Cole was the uncle. And uh, on the way to the restaurant after the service while the nephew was in the front seat and, and uh, the driver and Brother Billy Cole was in the back seat and if you knew Billy Cole you'd know why he was in the back seat and uh, so he turns around his nephew does Brother Michael and says Uncle Billy I'm sorry about tonight he said I did not do a good job and said I didn't get where I wanted to go in the sermon I've been there and you have he said, Brother Billy Cole looked at him and, and pointed his Franklin and said, I rebuke you, your spirit in the name of Jesus. Yes, he said, Uncle Billy, what's wrong with you? He said, let me tell you something, boy. He said, if you'll take the blame when a service don't go like you think it should, you'll take the credit when it does. Yes, that makes a strong church. Yes, and, and I make it see. Yes, that makes a strong church. Yes, if I'm growing in the, in the grace of God and I'm growing, my ministry is growing, if you can tell some difference what you heard last year at this time, if you can tell a little different, that means my, my ministry is growing and you ought to be growing. The church ought to be growing. When the minister is pleasing to God, the congregation is happier. When you walk in the door, you can feel the shit kind of go. Because the ministry is pleasing to God. I could say some things, but I'm, I'm going to back out of that because it's not the time. What, we're, what we all are seeking for, you, anyone here, there, there, up in the balcony, here's what we're seeking for. Now, if we're seeking anything other than this, we need to get some, get some priorities right. We're seeking for Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said to him, well done. I'm seeking not to please a church board, right, although I would like, if I want to make sure I, please, I try to please everybody, yes. 
But I'm seeking to hear him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant that has been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We all strive to please the Lord. We want to please him. Don't want to go where I don't think he would go. Don't want to say what I think he would not say. Don't want to treat somebody in the manner that I don't think he would do it. I want to love people that he said love. I want to give until there's no more to give. I want to pray until I can't pray. That's what the Lord would do. If he was here, somebody said it, I think Brother Mark the other night, he would be where the crowd is of sinners. He'd be seeking sinners. He said the sick need the position, not the well. And so that's, that is a growing church. It grows stronger and stronger and stronger. I strive to please the Lord. And then I can I get this book. And I can study it. And most places that I want to find, I can go find them. I got known they got it marked. <laughs> With all the responsibilities that come with the calling that God has put on me and you, I strive to please him in those responsibilities. I am responsible. The buck stops right here. And you got a calling on your life. Or oh, not a pulpit calling. Not a pastoral calling, but you're called to be saints. Did you know people are reading you? They're looking at you? If you act or do in a manner that would not be becoming a saint, did you know they say, hmm, thought that was a Christian. Do you know if you live or act in an ungodly manner and uh, or a, a manner that would bring a reproach you know you're not reproaching yourself. You're reproaching God. Wow. You're bringing a reproach on your church, wow. your local assembly, and you're bringing a reproach on your pastor. If we live in that fashion, if I dress that way, if I go out uh, half naked, if, if I go out with no shirt on, well, number one, I scare people to death. <laughs> you know, my muscular body. <laughs> if I go out half dressed, you know, I'm bringing a reproach on this assembly. I'm bringing a reproach on Brother Creasy's ministry. Y'all didn't know it's in that book, did you? You do. You find that by studying the Word of God. People are, I need you. I need you. You need me. Not just, you, need, you need a preacher. You don't need a puppet. You don't need somebody to tell you you're all gay when you're living like a dirt bag. You need a preacher, a prophet, not a puppet. And so we strive with all the responsibility I got on my calling. I have to strive to meet that situation head on. To know Jesus in his fullness is we should be diligent in studying God's word. To increase the intimacy. Am I pronouncing that right? If I could increase that, the intimacy of my relationship with God, I've got to diligently study this book. If I'm going to increase the intimacy of with my wife, I've got to spend some time with her. You see what I'm saying? Me and her, we we got to spend some time together. We gotta to go somewhere. We got to go eat. Uh, we got to go. Can't ride a Ferris wheel. She's afraid of those things. <laughs> but we got to spend some time together. If I'm going to increase, now I, I'm not. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about bedroom time. I'm not talking about that. Don't get the wrong idea. I'm talking about just spend some time together. Hold hands. We're holding hands. We're walking around that uh, amusement park where the kids are out there in Florida. We was walking around and looking at everything and holding hands, and I could see people. I thought, well, you just wait, you're my age, and 
Bueno, a poco a poco. You just been, and if, and if I'm going to increase my relationship with God, I got to get in that book. Cause I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back and say what I said a while ago. When I'm in the book, brother Michael, I'm walking where God walks. You can't walk where God walks and not be encouraged. Are you understanding? I, I hope you're understanding. I hope I'm not making a making a total mess of this of this lesson here today. To increase that every day. You know why I get up at four o'clock every morning? I'm I'm increasing my intimacy with God. Spending time, me and him. My wife won't even get up and go to the coffee pot because it's close to where I'm sitting until she knows I have finished my time with the Lord. Now, I'm not new. I'm not super spiritual. I'm certainly not super lucky. Somebody wrote a song and Sister Priscilla McGruder sang it. She said, I'm in this by design. God ordered this. I come to cover it by design. I'm here by direct appointment. When I was in the South Vietnam dodging real bullets, there was an appointment hanging over my head. I hope you make I hope I can see it. Just to know it. It increases my everything about me. When you read and study and meditate, don't just read it, meditate on it. On the Word of God, putting the Word of God in my mind. Why do you think I, I bother? Well, I can't help it now. I've got all these kids ruling. I don't know what they'll do if I ever have to retire, have to, have to quit, or get sick. Can't. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Why do you think I do that every time those babies come up here? I'm trying to get it in their mind. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when, the, when they said that uh, you got to bow down, you got to you got to worship my God, and, and you got to do this, you got to do that, or we gonna barbecue you? They said uh, to themselves, "We don't know, or maybe they said, we don't know what God's going to do. We don't know if He's going to deliver us from that fire or not." But I can tell you one thing, King: we ain't worshiping your God. You know why they can say that, Roger? Because every Sabbath, every Sabbath, every Sabbath, their parents had been in the temple and heard a man stand and said, "Hear, O Israel." The Lord our God is one, and they knew, and don't worship no other God before me. Amen. And they knew it. You know why they knew it? It got in their, it got in their coconut. And when somebody quoted it, they knew what the king was saying. And they said, "We're not going to worship your God." Said, "We don't know what God's going to deliver us from the fire or not, but we know He's going to deliver us from your hands. We're not coming back your way, King." And he did. They throwed him in the fire. Somebody said they played the music. The music couldn't turn them. Throwed them in the fire, and the fire couldn't burn them. God's in the business. And he's looking for some good men and women right here. He's, he's looking over this congregation right now, Brother Gil. You're a good one. You're a good You're a good one. You're a good one. Y'all been blazing a trail a long time. Don't quit, brother. Don't quit. If you have to keep pushing that lady around that wheelchair, keep pushing. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't say, well, we done got too old. Or, oh, no, I, she can't get around to it. Told her, what have you got to do? Yeah. Don't quit. Don't, don't quit. Right. Thank you, Lord. Boy, I love to hear me teach. I'm so truthful. Study to show thyself a, a, a workman. Uh, let me tell you what studying is. Now, you, I'm going to get a lot of raised eyebrows here. But you go home and repent. You'll be fine. <laughs> studying the Word of God is different from worship. It's not even on the same page with worship. It's not on the same page with prayer. It couples with prayer, but it's not on the same page. It's not on the same pray page with praise. The worship of studying the Word of God is on the, on the level of itself. It's not even like preaching. Like I'm doing right now, you're listening and you're approving. I can tell that. I can feel the anointing. But it's not the same thing. It's not on the same page with that. We must be in the Word of God. Get a hold of the Word. One preacher put it like this. I thought I'd never get to this line. One preacher put it this way. Brother Mark, are you listening to me? One preacher put it like this. Visit all the good Christian books you want to. Yes, sir. But live in the Word of God. Amen. Yes, sir. What an awesome statement. Read all the books you want to read. Read all the magazines. 
everything you order it, get it off the internet, whatever you got to do, go to your conferences, go to your camp meetings, get involved, run the house, jump, shout, but live in the Word of God. If you live in that Word of God, friend, you will never, ever, ever go wrong. One thing we need to remember this, every generation needs the next generation. We need the next one. That group of kids over here, this generation needs that generation. They need us to stand for truth. They need to see Mama and Daddy worshiping together. Every generation needs the next generation due to the nature of life. Of just what life is. All of us must experience a time of growth. So I need each other. I need you. You help me to grow. I, help, I, I hope I can help you to grow. We need one another. Especially in our generation. Man, people are crazy. Policeman sitting here, he can, he can, ain't even safe with this man to get out of his police car and walk up to a car that he has pulled over in his right. police car. Right. It's not safe. Right. Wow. Has to guard himself. Yeah. Watch the man or lady's hand. Am I telling it right? You can't just go, you know, diddy bopping up there and say, hey, bro, what's up? <laughs> he blow your head off. That's the kind of generation we're living in. Right. You don't think that generation over here, those babies don't need this generation? You don't think they don't need us to stand strong, firm? Don't you think they don't need us to have the preacher for dinner every time you sit at the table and you got to talk about him, criticize him, criticize his home, criticize... Oh, I mean, they don't need that. Somebody told one of the kids one day, it's been years ago, said, said, behave, the preacher will get you. I said, no, I won't. No, I'm not. I'm not going to get them. You get them. But not my place to spank your kid. You spank that little turkey. If he means spank him, don't, don't abuse him, don't hurt him, don't cut strikes him. Boy, I've got them. You two men, they, my uncle, they take a cop stall. Go, Roger, pull up a cop stall with the bows on. And whoop his daughter. And I seen her back turn red for blood. That's crazy. That's abuse. That's hurting. But you don't think they don't need us. They need us. We need them. We need to train them. Teach them. I'm going to tell you what I need. I'm fixing to close here. Just now. I don't know what time it is. But whatever time it is. Brother Jeff, would you step over there and tell them it's time? Oh, such a good one. Please, thank you if you would. Uh, there's, uh, we need every generation, due to especially this nature, uh, need, uh, we need someone, a uh, help to guide us. To guide us. Paul needed Timothy. Timothy needed Paul. They needed one another. I need, I need an elder. That's why we got, now I'm an elder, okay? I, I understand that not, not just in, in, my, in years, I'm an elder. I'm an elder in the church. But I got elders, brother, still in the organization. I need those elders. I got men leadership position in our organization that's younger than me, but they're still my elder. And I need to be able to go pick my phone up and call that elder and say, hey, Brother Brown, or Brother, or whoever, brother, uh, whoever the name is, uh, Brother Shepherd, uh, I, I, I need some, some counseling. I need somebody to talk to. I want to have some coffee with you. I'd like to sit down and have lunch or dinner. I'd like, to, and I'd like to talk with you. I need some, I need some, I need a push. I need an elder to push me. And I need a young man. I need a young ministry. I need, I need, uh, uh, I need brother uh, Sam. I need Ernie. I need to be able to sit Ernie and Sam and, 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 and my partner right here. I need to be able to sit them down and, and, and say, now I want you to look at the, the gray hair I got in my head. And I want you to look. That's years of experience. And you, you're going to, one day, Lord tarries, you're going to be standing here <laughs> talking to some young preacher, we need you. Right. Ernie, we need you to stand firm. Right. We need you, Sam, to stand firm in the Word of God. Stand firm. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman 
that need them not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Thank you, sweetheart. Four minutes. I'd say a lot for it. But I'd really just about finished it. Where's our elders at? Where is our elders that, that we can learn from? Elders that we can seek wisdom from. Where's our young preachers that are full of zeal and, and spunk? Got some gravel in their gut. Spit in their eye. Are oh, you understanding? Where are they? That's what we need today. This generation needs the elder. That's why the Bible said, if any among you seek, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them call the elders of the church. It's okay for the younger, but make sure you got your elders on the, on the board. Make sure you got your elders anointing with oil. You got to have some elders. You got to have somebody that can say, I know God's a healer. See him do it. I've seen God heal a, a burning up fevered brow one night just at the mentioning of the name of Jesus. The child raised up in my arms and looked at me like, Where are we? Do, what are we doing out here in the night air? We need elders that can witness and testify to that. And we need younger preachers to perk up their ears and listen to our elders and not poke fun at them and say, boy, look at that. He ain't got no hair and he ain't got no teeth. And, but believe him alone. She bears got out and out and got some kids that peeked at an elder. Right. Come on. Come on. So, having said everything I've said today, study the Word of God. Get into the Word of God. Amen. It'll do you good. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Sister Creasy's going to sing. And get the service started. We appreciate you. Thank you, Sister Creasy, for letting me teach. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Praise the Lord.